Hello, and thank you for stopping by. If you are a subscriber, welcome back. If you are not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button so you can be notified when new videos arrive. Question. What makes a right a right? I got to thinking today about people's rights and I was watching a video where a gentleman was talking about his rights were being trampled on because he was told he had to wear a mask during this pandemic. I am curious to figure out, or I'm trying to figure out, I'm curious what makes a right a right? What constitutes a right? We have rights that are written down such as freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of assembly, uh, freedom of religion, and things of that nature. We have those rights that are written down in the Bill of Rights, but then we have the Ninth Amendment, which is supposed to protect rights that are not written down. So, how do we know what a right is and how do we get to an area where the right is respected as a right up until the middle 1970s the right to privacy was not considered a right it wasn't common as a right nobody had any expectation that they had the right to privacy until somebody took it to the Supreme Court and the judge, the Supreme Court ruled that people did have the right to privacy. Right to privacy is not written down, but it is protected by the Ninth Amendment. Now, we have a lot of people that want to talk about the Second Amendment and the right to bear arms. Now, I tell people this all the time. Look. The Second Amendment is one, it's one phrase, it's one phrase, not one and two. It's not a part one and a part two. It is one phrase separated with a pause, almost like when you're saying something and then you take a pause and then you finish what you were saying. The way people wrote back then, sometimes they put what should be first, last, and they put what should be last first. Now, I know this because I read certain books, and when we start reading our books in English, we start from the front, and we read to the back. But there's some cultures where the front of the book actually starts in the back and it goes to the left instead of from the left to the right. And the same thing with the way things were written, especially in like the King's English, because America was still under parliamentary rule at that time. So when people say, I have the right to bear arms, they have been allowed to use that as their right to bear arms. But in all actuality, unless you're in a well-regulated militia, you do not have the right to bear arms under the Second Amendment. The gun was yours as a militia member you were to be called and you were to protect your town or your state from tyrannical oppression from the federal government or state government if it's a state issue you have the right to protect your town that's what it was for and the federal government does not have the right to walk in and say, oh, hey, fellas, oh, don't worry about it. Everything's fine. You can put down your guns. 
You can give them to us. Everything's good. We have the National Guard now. And we have the State Guard. So you don't need a militia. And then over time, we did away with the militia. And now, when you try to be a part of a militia, the federal government wants to label you a terrorist. They want to label you the bad guy. Now, back to what I was talking about with rights. The reason I'm mentioning this is because we have the freedom of movement. Now, the open roads are supposed to be ours, but for some odd reason, we do not want them to be ours. We do not want the roads to be ours. We want them to be somebody else's because we feel like we will be responsible for taking care of those roads. Now, the federal government was supposed to be in charge of the upkeep on the roads. Now, I understand back in the day when the Constitution was written and the Bill of Rights were put in that things were a lot different. We didn't have automobiles back then. We didn't have the big population as we got now. So things happen. Now, I want to exercise my right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. And being in an automobile that I own allows me to be able to do that more freely. I have a better quality of life. I'm enjoying my liberty while pursuing my happiness. Now, supposing I would be happier living in a place where there's no access to public transportation, no access to the Greyhound. Um, the nearest grocery store is five miles away. So how am I going to get there? I would use an automobile to travel to and from the store, to and from um, places I need to get to. But for some odd reason, the American public do not want traveling to be a right. They are drilled that when you are a child, you grow up and get your driver's license and you get a car, that you are a driver. They have taken the slang term of driver or drive and they have put that um, into legal context. A driver is somebody who gets paid to do something that's commerce related. They're making a profit. It's their job to drive, basically. I'm not a driver because I don't get paid to drive. Now, you can take uh, and lump it. You can take and lump everybody into that driver box. You can do that. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you are a driver. So, what constitutes a right? The Ninth Amendment says that all rights that are not written down are protected. So, what makes a right a right? If I say, oh, this is my right, another person can say, no, that's not your right. Or a court can come in and say, no. The majority of the people don't want it to be a right, therefore it's not a right. It doesn't matter if it's your right. It doesn't matter if you want to do it or not. All that matters is what the majority of the people decide. When we were a republic, we were unable to do that. But as we edged away from being a republic to being a democratic society, where we are no longer governed by the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. We are governed by the people, which means that if the people decide they don't want something, all they've got to do is just go and vote it out. It doesn't matter what the Constitution says about it. What matters is that the people don't like it and the judges, the Supreme Court judges especially, are afraid to rule on things. My right to free travel I've been taken to federal court. I live on federal property. I've been taken to federal court several times. I am unable to get a lawyer that is willing to defend me. 
because they find out that I've never had a driver's license before. They'll only help me if I've had a license and it's been revoked because they don't want to bite the hand that feeds them. Just think, if I could prove my case in court that I have the right to travel, you know how much money the state DMV would lose every year? Instead of just getting money from an actual driver, which is what they're supposed to do, a driver is supposed to get a license because he is making commerce and he's making profit off of our roads, off of yours and mine. Therefore, he has to pay for that privilege. But when they got the bright idea to lump us all into the driver box and force everybody to get a driver's license to be on the open road, they decided that they could make a lot more money. And they have. They say, oh, we're not really making uh, a lot of money because uh, um, we're just barely breaking even. But no, they're making millions and millions and millions of dollars a year. And that may not be a lot. Maybe I should have said billions. But almost every day, somebody's going to get a driver's license and it costs, what, $24, $25, $30? People would like to pay for a tab for their car, a license plate for their car, a driver's license. That's That costs money. I guess they like paying that every year. It's like, oh, I just happen to have a couple hundred dollars I don't need. Here, take it. Well, I believe that that is wrong. And if I could find a judge or if I could find a lawyer that was willing to back me up, I try talking to everybody like Eddie Craig and the tale of law. He talks about how the statutes are not created for the traveler, but for the person in commerce. That's a driver, truck driver, school bus driver, a cab driver, Uber driver, a delivery driver. All of those have the word driver in their title because it says that they are a driver. Now, not to take this too far, I'm already into this for 12 minutes, but when I had an automobile, I did have full coverage insurance on my automobile. It's only fair if I'm out on the road and I am using my automobile and I get into an accident or somebody gets into an accident with me, I should be responsible and pay for my own whatever. And if I, my automobile, it's made by man, it's not perfect. There can be times when maybe the brakes will go out or maybe it won't slow down fast enough and I hit a patch of ice and slide through an intersection and I hit somebody. I will have insurance to cover their damages. Now, I asked my insurance company why it's called auto insurance instead of motor vehicle insurance. If my automobile is considered a motor vehicle by the state, and I have to get a driver's license because I'm operating a motor vehicle, why isn't it called motor vehicle insurance and not automobile insurance? They said that most people that have insurance for trucks or automobiles that they use for work, they have special insurance for that. They have a special license for that. The average traveler such as myself uses an automobile and the automobile when it was created in the factory it was created for a particular purpose now um, I tried to find a legal definition of driver and I found something that is the closest and people will argue with me on this as much as they can but I found something and uh, um, it is US 18 of the U.S. Uh, code, uh, 18 U.S. Code, subsection 31, definitions. Now, this is what I'm going by. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because this is what my insurance company told me. The term motor vehicle, now this deals with theft. This deals with uh, aircraft. 
an automobile now. The reason I'm saying that this is the closest definition to a motor vehicle that I can find is because it is written in such a way that it has absolutely nothing to do with the section that it is in. And you can look this up yourself and read it and tell your and ask yourself, does this make sense? The definition, how does this deal with anything that's within um, um, U.S. Code 18, subsection 31, 6 and 10? It says here, the term motor vehicle means every description of carriage or other contrivance. Now, contrivance is very important because... The word contrivance means a thing which is skillfully and inventively created for a particular purpose. A carriage or other contrivance propelled or drawn by mechanical power and used for commercial purposes on the highways and the transportation of passengers, passengers and property or property and cargo. Now, that has absolutely nothing to do with with automobile crime, such as transporting uh, your chop shop material, like you chop up a car, you take the parts across state line, that has absolutely nothing to do with that. Now, they can argue that it deals with the transportation of illegal immigrants, maybe, but that's a stretch. Now, the reason I brought this up was because my insurance company said that my automobile was created to be a family car or a pleasure car. That if my, it was a Windstar minivan of 2000, if it was two feet taller, if it was, if it was two feet wider, and it was about four feet longer, it would be classified as a motor vehicle as it came off the lot, off the assembly line, but it wasn't. It was classified as a automobile, therefore they give me automobile insurance. Now it is a contrivance. Now no matter what the state says, that's what it's for. Now a cooler is created to put ice inside and keep things cold. You can also soak your feet in it. You can put hot water in a cooler and put your feet in there. And you can soak your feet. That's not what it was created for, but that's what you can do with it. It was created to keep items cold. That's what a, um, a cooler was created for. Now, rights. What is a right if it's not written down? How do we prove that a right is a right? Your guess is as good as mine. If you know anything, if you've had any kind of dealing with this subject before, please be so kind as to put it in the comment below um, because I'd like to hear from you about it. If you think I'm totally nuts, just put it in a comment and explain why you think I'm nuts. Um, if you uh, have any ideas how to make a right a right without it being written in the Constitution using the Ninth Amendment, let me know. If you like my video and you want to hit the subscribe or the like button, do so. Hit the thumb and the like. Um, if you want to uh, subscribe to my videos, please hit the subscribe button and click that notification so you can be notified when my videos arrive. I'm going to let you go on this note. Remember that it takes us working together to make this union flourish. It is possible to be a part of a group and still have your own opinion. Make tomorrow better than yesterday by doing the very best we can today. Have a good morning, America, and all points beyond.